So for those of you just joining us, um, would love to hear in the chat where you're joining us from. We have Pasadena, Houston, Michigan. We have a lot of Texas on here. Colorado. La Isla de Encanto. Texas, Texas. Lots of Texas. Georgia. Georgia. Awesome. Amazing. Lidari San Miguel Rivera. Presente. Tienes que alzar la mano, Lidari. Okay. So the person in Michigan, is it cold there already? It is cold. It's getting pretty chilly pretty quick. This summer, <laughs> it was already like 60 degrees at one point. Have yeah. you, like, taken your winter jacket out of storage yet? Oh, I'm, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Definitely hoodie weather. Yeah, I'm in Indiana, so I'm nearby. And today I was a little confused. I wore, like, sandals, but a sweater. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so we have one more minute until we start. It looks like people are trickling in a little late. Um, and um, panelists, one thing I will remind you is that we have so much viewership after the fact, because sometimes if students don't watch this during the time, um, they'll watch it back. And so if there's something that wasn't asked or something you still want to share, feel free to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're at 705. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Cassandra Salazar. I work at SHIP on the Research and Impact Team. And this is one of our amazing programs and a great partnership that we have with Dow, which is called Passport to Dow Careers. And this is a chance for you to kind of get some insight from their employees to hear about their experience, how they got to where they are, um, and really so that you can find your story and how their similarities and so that you understand um, that you belong in STEM, that you belong in engineering and you belong at companies like Dow. And so today we'll hear from um, different people um, in different areas here. And so I just want to welcome all of you um, and know that this is supposed to be an educational space and this is a safe space. So um, as you hear our panelists talking, make sure you take down notes. Uh, there's going to be plenty of time for Q&A. Um, and this is the time that you have direct access, right, to people on their talent acquisition team, to the engineers in different areas. And so this is an incredible opportunity for you to connect. Um, so I'll go ahead and let our Dow employees um, and panelists introduce themselves. Um, and panelists, if you want to share um, the favorite dish from your country. Um, we would also like to hear that in your introduction. Um, so we'll go ahead and um, start here. We'll do Anika or Erika, Fabio, and then Monica. Okay, can I start? Yep. Okay, my name is Erika Vergado. I'm located in Texas, okay? I'm in Helen, that's close to Houston because my office is in Freeport, Lake Jackson. Um, I'm a, <laughs> it's interesting, okay? I'm originally from Brazil, but my dad was from Spain and now I live in US, right? And then I have a mix of culture because I can speak Spanish and I can speak Portuguese too. My favorite dish, Cassandra, is of course Brazilian steak houses, right? Brazilian barbecue, picanha, right? Pão de queijo. Then uh, if you go to Brazilian steak house, I can tell you that I eat everything, okay? From the pão de queijo, from the aipim, from the picanha. Everybody's shaking their hands. That's my favorite food. <clears throat> and I'm so happy to be here, okay? 
Thank you, Eric. I guess it's my turn. To, um, Fabio Aguirre, uh, originally from Colombia, joined the company 34 years ago in Bogota. Um, I got my degree in chemistry from the Uni Universidad Industrial de Santander. Uh, when I joined out, I didn't speak any English at all. So hopefully that's a good uh, encouragement for you guys. Um, the In terms of uh, my favorite dish, it's kind of difficult because there are so many good dishes. As you guys know about the culinary in Colombia, it depends on the region. If you are on the mountains, you have a beautiful um, of delicious dishes over there. Or you go to the Caribbean coast, or you go to the Pacific coast, you're going to find all kind of variety. But not originally from... Um, um, a small town called Barranca Bermeja. We say that it's a place where many people born, but not many people actually stay because it's a petroleum town. It's very hot, very humid, uh, um, very much like Houston in, Houston in summer the whole year. Uh, but um, so we appreciate uh, from the side of my mom and my dad uh, different different culture, different cuisines. To make it short, um, I like uh, the typical uh, Sant Santanderiano plat a, a dish. Um, it's complicated. You, we can we can talk about um, how how it's actually made, uh, and, and also the traditional pasteles. Uh, it's maybe in uh, Christmas time that we make the uh, uh, pasteles de arroz. Uh, it's kind of the tamales from the Caribbean coast, de delicious. And I was. Uh, waiting for Christmas to arrive to get a taste of the tamales from, from that region. So that's me, guys. Looking forward don't to forget, that. Don't forget the dulce de leche, no? Oh, well, I'm not sure that's all. That's from Colombia, actually. But well, we I, have I our version called Manjar Blanco. Whenever so. I go, it's a dulce de leche. It's, it's, it's a, I, I, I'm not going to claim that for Colombia, for sure. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble with my friends from Mexico or maybe... Uh, in Argentina. Argentina, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. I didn't know about the pastel de arroz. Uh, and we, I mean, I'm from Colombia too. So I'm Monica Gordillo Varela, everyone. Uh, I'm from Colombia. I'm probably the newest. Yeah, I am the newest of all my Dow colleagues in here and also my panelist colleagues. Uh, I've been in the company just for one year and four months. <laughs> Yay. And well, my favorite Colombian dish is a uh, sancocho de gallina, which is kind of like a chicken soup. I mean, it's better than a soup. And it has like avocado, plantain. Uh, it's delicious. And I mean, you can eat it pretty much every time, like any time of the year. We usually are like, well, where I'm from, it's very hot all year. And this is a dish that is also really hot, like, but not hot, mm. spicy, but it's just hot. <laughs> and then you'll be like eating, exactly. So you'll be eating and still, I mean, you'll be sweating and, and but still you enjoy it. So it's not like just typical for like cold weathers. And that's my favorite dish. Yep. You can invite me and Fabio to eat, okay, in your house. <laughs> okay, I'll invite you for sure. <laughs> I made one that is really good. So, yeah. <laughs> With leña. Leña. That's, uh, yeah, that's we need some leña. <laughs> I'm hungry, Cassandra. Now I'm, I'm so hungry. It's uh, 6 <laughs> Um, so Monica will be a panelist as well. She's going to be facilitating. Um, but I want to let you all know if you have questions, um, she is fair game too. So, um, she's able to answer. And I think she has a lot of incredible insight too. Um, you know, talking about how she just went through this process of joining a new company. Um, so she has all of these things fresh on her mind. Um, and I want to pause. I don't know. Does anyone else from Dow want to introduce themselves that's not a panelist? Yeah, I'll just quickly introduce myself. I'm Juliana Francisco. I I work in the R&D department, research and development based in Texas, Lake Jackson. Chemical engineer from Brazil. And my favorite dish, black beans stew.
Feijoada. Feijoada, yeah. Mm. Love it. I'm hungry too now, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I introduce myself a little bit. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, Diego. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm also. How come, how come you are in Pasadena, California, by the way? <laughs> I am in a conference right now in the GMS, the Green Mines oh. in Spain. Okay. So I am, awesome. I am uh, you know, participating on behalf of DAO. Uh, I am from Colombia. I have been in DAO 15 years. I am a research scientist working in DAO Industrial Solutions. And my favorite dish is actually a pecan. Yeah, I, I think I love picanha, and I, I know how to make picanha in, in Lake Jackson, which is weird, right? <laughs> so, okay, I think we, Lidaris, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Yes, so my name is Lidaris Miguel Rivera. I'm originally from Puerto Rico. I'm a senior TSND scientist in Dow Coding Materials, and I've been at the company for 15 years. So, all the dishes that they uh, mentioned resonate with me. We have pasteles de arroz, we have sancocho, we ha I have tried Diego's picanha and it's excellent, but I will have to pick mofongo, which is mashed plantain dish, and it's delicious. I love it. I love mofongo. I love it. I have been in Puerto Rico and I love mofongo. Don't recall having mofongo. Oh, it's really good. Next time. But um, hey, that is you can do it and invite me again, okay? I'm good at you eat, not to cook. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, now that you all know a little bit about um, the team at Dow and their favorite dishes, uh, we're going to go ahead and begin the panel here. Uh, Monica has a couple questions that she's going to begin with, uh, but like I said, feel free to take notes. We're going to open it up to everyone, um, and this can be you unmuting yourself and introducing yourself to the panelists. Um, and it can also be, you just write it in the chat if you're not in a space where you can talk out loud. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Yep, absolutely. Well, yeah, I think this is a good time to start with like one of the, uh, probably something that everyone here wants to know. And is like, this is for our panelists. Can you please walk us through your career path? What was a pivoting pivoting moment that impacted your current trajectory. So if you could give us just hint, some hints in like a couple minutes about what was that trajectory like for you and what made you decide to come to Dow or pursue your dreams. Okay. I'm going to start with Erica. Yeah. Oh, start yeah. with me? Start with yes. <laughs> Again? Okay. Um, I started, uh, let me say that I graduated as a chemist, okay, but in fact, I started chemical engineer as my major, but after two years doing chemical engineer, and the, the teacher came and asked me to draw a butterfly valve in third dimension, okay, my brain did not work. Then I said, I did a butterfly in a piece of paper and I gave to him, okay, and I said, that's not for me. Then um, he tried to convince me to stay, and I said, no, do you know what? I'm going to do other things, okay? Um, he suggested me to go to do chemistry because I really like all the chemist subjects, all the unit operations, reactions, reactors, calculate the number of plates of a distillation column. Do you know that things for engineer, right? Um, then I moved my major after two years and I went to chemistry and I'm a bachelor in chemistry with special attributions in engineering, right? Because I have a minor engineer. But nowadays engineers cannot lie for me because I know a lot of things, right? It's a funny story. Then I did not start at Dow at all. I started in an engineering plastics company, really young. I graduated really young. Then uh, I started in engineering plastics, developing engineering plastics for appliances, for panels, for car panels, right? And I work with all type of plastics. But uh, when you start uh, to work with plastics in the lab and in the R&D, right, developing all the additives, the antioxidants, was not my passion, right? I was kind of not uh, happy because I did not uh, have exposure to chemistry. Then finally, I was looking for jobs in a chemical company and Dow Open have an open job for me. 
And when I went and to apply for the job, of course, there is 30 candidates, okay, for that. And I was the youngest one. I was the very naive person because a lot of people had a lot of experience. Then my expectation is, how oh, I'm here for fun, right? I will not get this job. This is a big American company. Monica or Fabio, I was speaking English, okay, and in Spanish. I have some advantages, right, in, because in my house, we are obligated to speak Spanish. Then I have some advantage. But then I apply for the job when you are 22 years old, right? You said, ah, I'm not here for fun. These guys have more experience than me. Why I'm here, right? Guess what? I got the job. And then I was scared. I said, oh my goodness. How can they hire me, right? was funny that um, the last interview was with the production leader of the plant that I will work. I worked. My first plant was latex. And then he looked at me and said, why did you apply for this job? <laughs> And I said, it was so funny that I remember this today. I said, oh, because I want to be you tomorrow. I want to have your chair, your job, okay? Then um, sometimes you needed to dream big and take risks when you apply for a job. Then I work uh, in Dow. I start to work in a plant, right? Working shifts. Uh, when I start in the plant, there is no uniform for me. There is no FRC. There is no shoes. There is no hat for my head because I was really small and thin. And there is no changing rooms. There is no restrooms for women because I was the first woman in the plant. The only person that works uh, as a woman in the plant was the secretary, right, of the production leader. Then uh, guess what? You needed to start to change your mind. If you want to do the job, what is the challenge, right? I said, okay, then I'm going to use the men's room. We need to have a schedule. You need to give me three lockers. You need to put uh, black uh, film in the windows, right? And I'm going to use the men's room. What is the problem, right? Because in my house, I have three brothers. We use the same restroom. What is the problem in the plant that you use the same restroom? Change your mindset. Be adaptable, right? I want this job. I'm not going to give up. Then in that time, when you work in shifts, right, you deal only with men. And you know that that time, this is 35 years ago, right? You need to think that the mindset, and I see a lot of women here, the mindset was completely different, okay? Because uh, on my time, women do not apply for engineering. Women do not apply for chemistry, okay? Women do not work in shifts then you can imagine that I did not uh, give up because of that. I just did my job. I learned a lot with the operators. I have a lot of respect for them. And I start to move my career. In every three years, I move to a new plant, to a new business, okay, to a new job. I, I, I'm always curious to learn new things. Then I was not worried to go in vertical way in my career. But in fact, I start to think in horizontal way. What I can learn more doing the same job. Okay, I was this person in this plant. How can I be in another plant to learn a new technology? And then I move it until today in 10 different technologies, as we call. 10 different plants, 10 different uh, ways to do things. I move it between manufacturing. I went to logistics. I went to supply chain. I went to safety, industrial hygiene, environmental. I work in wastewater treatment. Then I move it again. I will be responsible for five labs, two sites. I did a lot of mergers and divestures in my career. When we acquire companies, when we sell uh, plants, okay, for other companies. Then I moved to US. After 19 years, they invited me to move to US. Then I moved to Michigan. I was in Midland for two, yes, Kimberly, for two terrible winters, okay? <laughs> Imagine someone from the South, okay, moving to the North and everybody's saying that, oh, we have a four seasons. And I think that that four seasons are not true, okay? Then I spent two nice winters, very bad winters in Midland. 
I moved, I'm a single parent now with a daughter of seven years old. Then there was a challenge for me. I spent two years working for starting up a Dow automotive plant that we produced the glass, glass bounding for the windshields. Dow produced that adhesives. And we built the two plants, one in Midland and one in Germany, East Copa. That my job is to understand the, how can we satisfy the customers and preparing all the package to qualify. After I did that, the plants start up, they invite me to come to Texas. Yes, and I said, yes, going to the hot again. And I moved to Texas. I'm in Texas almost uh, 17 years, okay? I'm a business quarter leader. I have a global role. I'm responsible for several, two business units that produces more than uh, around the 2,000 products, different products. I have a team of 16 people around the world. Believe it or not, I don't have any person that reports to me in Texas. I have everybody outside Texas. And I have people from China, Japan, to West California, okay? Then you can imagine how it's difficult to talk with my 16 people at the same time. If I were you, if I would be in your shoes, okay? It can be all of you can be my daughters, my son, right? Because I have a daughter now, she's 24. She graduated in the University of Texas. She's in the market. Um, she has participated in this kind of uh, events. Then I will tell you what I'll tell my daughter, okay? First of all, know your goals. Know what you want, okay? Know what you like it and think about uh, how you see yourself in five, 10 years, okay? This is really important in a personal way and in a professional way. With that, don't give up. You will not get the jobs at the first time that you apply, okay? You will be competing with uh, 300 people and you'll be able to get a surprise that you'll be hired. Sometimes you apply thinking that you like that company and uh, you realize after two, three years that you are not happy. Change it, okay? Make the things happen for you first, then after for the company. I'm not here after 35 years because of the money. I'm here because I'm really happy, okay? I love what I do. I love the people that work for me. And this company makes a lot of change in my life, okay? And that's my two tips about my career. Wow, thank you so much, Erika. I know Fabio for, in this 35 years, I know Fabio for 33. <laughs> then you can imagine, we worked together in several times of these 35 years. It's amazing, yeah. Yeah, so that's been quite work. a journey, yeah. Go ahead, Fabio. Uh, well, um, since uh, Erika started in childhood, I'm going to also start there. I mean, I was uh, like many children um, today, uh, mixing things all the time, right? So I love it. And uh, my parents have to keep everything locked, especially the muriatic acid. I love it, the muriatic acid, because all the bubbles that actually produce in contact with any surface, especially with concrete, um, and that, that was mesmerizing for me, how, how that can happen, right? Uh, well, I, it was clear for me that uh, mixing things and torturing nature was kind of my, my, my thing. So I decided to study um, chemistry um, in a public university in Colombia, in Santander, in, in La Luis. And it was kind of a very strange choice for my, my dad to say, what, what are you going to study? What chemistry? What are you going to be a, a, a school professor or something like that? Secondary school? I have a lot of respect for that, but he he wanted me to you know be some kind of um, lawyer or maybe <laughs> I don't know what we had in mind, but uh, doctor, no, doctor, doctor, lawyer, right? Doctor, that, that's, or even a dentist that would be even better. <laughs> A dentist, but the chemist, uh, he he couldn't understand that. So he said that from the moment you um, you uh, wake up, you know what is the first thing that you are going to do? You are going to take a shower. Who treat that water? 
uh, was a chemist, right? Or chemistry. Um, the 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 toothbrush and the the tooth cream and that's also chemistry. All the the medicine that you take, it was engineered. But he he started looking at the world in a very different perspective, a little bit from my perspective. He said, oh, "Really, that's what you're going to study?" Yes, that that's what I want to study. So he was go for it. <laughs> Was very excited about that. So, and then, uh, yeah, it was um, enjoyed quite a lot my my um, uh, college years in in my university. Then, uh, getting close to the end, um, I was working, getting out of a, a lab, um, and then somebody, a professor, was um, asking me, "What are you doing here? What do you mean? Uh, the Dao people are here, and you are supposed to be." Who is Dao? Oh my goodness, that guy was really offended, right? Because he explained he was a professor of organic chemistry and gave me a lecture in there of the Dao Chemical Company on the contribution of the Dao Chemical Company to humanity. And it was <laughs> so I had to go and go to the interview with Dao with the Dao guys and uh, for a co-op. It was only a co-op program. And I said, well, I'm gonna please my professor. And also I'm going to learn what the industry actually do with chemistry because my plans were to get lost in a lab and chase electro electrons for the rest of my life. I really enjoy NMR on this kind of thing, very fundamental stuff in chemistry. And he said, well, but I was curious about, well, want to understand what the chemical industry. I told all these beautiful things to my dad to keep him uh, <laughs> kind of peaceful and, and supportive. But um, I was eye-opening. Right, because here is the problem, uh, Fabio, as a co um, here is the book and that kind of thing you have. Uh, by the way, uh, <laughs> we went through that. Uh, if you hopefully join you got that, that, um, Sunday, guys, you're going to spend probably the first month reading all the safety procedures of the company. Very important for us. Uh, safety is paramount in everything we do before we do anything. You have to be mindful of any uh, activity, especially in the lab, even uh, driving a car and that kind of thing. So anyway, I was reading all the um, the, the procedures and also the, the chemistry of polyurethane because in, chem in chemistry, you guys probably know that we don't really get into any details, right? The polyurethane is part of a very specific uh, condensation reaction and that of the many reactions that we study in chemistry. So he said, okay, uh, okay, this is a specific case. And I started uh, understanding the details. Uh, this is quite interesting because there are a lot of details in polyurethanes, which is actually, I, I did polyurethane for, for 15 years uh, in, in, in the company. And it was really interesting. Uh, not only the chemistry, but all what we call the, the micro structures, that we uh, hard segment, soft segment, segregation, and that kind of things. So anyway, um, supported the new uh, polio plan in Dow. I was hired after, you know, developing a new product. I got my degree in chemistry uh, to make it short, um, supported the, uh, the business in, in Colombia for 10 years. I was um, taking English classes from time to time, but I wasn't really planning to get out of the, but, but out my good life in Colombia, to be honest with you, with my family and, every, and my friends. Uh, but uh, the business in Colombia wasn't there anymore. I mean, for many reasons, we have to close operation in Colombia, and so we have to uh, stay only with the, um, our manufacturing plan and sell office, all the technical support, um, R&D, legal R&D that we have basically um, was transferred to Brazil or to North America. So I said, what? It's time to find a job. It's very important, right, guys? It's not the end of the world. You, as much as you love uh, some company, life happens to everybody. You have to be resilient. You have to say, okay, let's move on, right? And, and, and be prepared for that. And, and be, be curious, be connected. So I was re getting ready. I'm, I'm moving all, the, all, all my accounts, my responsibilities to my colleagues in other countries. And then I got a phone call from uh, somebody in Switzerland and said, um, do you would like to join us here? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, our lab in, in, in Geneva, Switzerland. 
Of course. <laughs> so I I have to I have I, I didn't no 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 I didn't have to think twice. It was one way ticket that was clear, right? Because no have we didn't have any job back in 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 the, in the country. So I have to all the English that I procrastinated for years in Colombia, I have to really accelerate that, right? And not only that, accelerate French, because I was interacting with, uh, oh my goodness, so you can imagine trying to learn two languages at the same time. And then I arrived to Geneva, and the first thing I noticed is that the English these guys were speaking was not American English, it was a British English. And I couldn't understand anything they were saying. So I have to listen to the BBC 24-7 uh, almost, get this us for English in, in my mind and get my, my uh, ear used to that. And also practice my broken French because I have to communicate with the technicians in, in French that didn't speak English. Um, I have to learn the new technologies and that kind of stuff. So that was a really pivotal moment, right? I mean, this is something that if you make it or you you are kind of, you know, destroyed because it's, it's too much, too much information, too much responsibility, not only for you, but your family as well. Family is coming into a new environment with no, no French at all, like my wife and that kind of, so I have to start from scratch. My wife actually learned French faster than me. She, she is very good uh, with the languages and also with the, in, in English. Um, the children, you know how they are. They are a sponge. They actually uh, learn language relatively quickly. So I, <laughs> I was the only idiot that was speaking a broken, a broken English and broken French at home. But it was good enough to be able to communicate, um, move the project forward and that kind of things. But uh, again, Life happen and company have to adjust to the new reality of the business. We have to close also our lab in Geneva, move everything to what we call the, the, the German part of Switzerland, Jorge. Guess what? Have to learn a new language, Swiss, learn, Swiss German, not even high German, Swiss German. Oh my goodness, here we go again. So start um, taking the, the first lesson on German until Somebody said, well, there is an actually an opportunity in the States and it's, it's on epoxy. It's another thermoxet, very chemistry oriented stuff. And I said, oh, that would be really interesting. So I did basically 15 years in polyurethanes uh, during uh, Europe and that kind of in, and, in and, uh, and Colombia. And starting in um, North America in 2005, uh, working on epoxy. And this is where we met uh, again with uh, Erika. Erika was running all the all the epoxy business at that time right Erika? <laughs> then, not all not all then well but, uh, hey, to... when you move to epoxy you start to understand about that dream that you have in colombia to understand how the roads are pavement right that... you start to understand that that's exactly right. So I came here 2005 and again to make it short, 10 years working on epoxy, a lot of changes. The company was moving, creating a, 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 what we call um, a market facing businesses. So it means that uh, we tried to collect all the, all the products for a particular market. So I was basically uh, joined something that was the our coating solutions uh, business. And then we got the acquisition of Roman Haas. I enjoy quite a lot the interaction with new colleagues from Roman Haas. They brought a new perspective to the business, especially in terms of, of marketing chemical products and that kind of things. And um, then we have to sell our epoxy business to Olin. I was part of transferring all the, what we call the, the, not the, uh, patents and CRIs, which is the research documents that we 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 have we developed uh, internally and products, and then join uh, polyurethane again. But uh, when I joined to polyurethane, the digital stuff was kind of starting, right? And um, I was helping the business of my uh, polyurethane uh, R and D to put together. 
the impact of our work in R&D, TS&D to the business. So collecting information from all the regions, the product that we developed, how much was the impact on the, on the, on the business in terms of variable margin and that kind of things. So I have to learn quite a lot of a lot of things using Excel, pivot tables, and that kind of things. And it's a, there should be a better way to do this, right? Because run, updating all these Excel's uh, every every month was really wasn't really fun. And um, so say, so, well, I, somebody told me, well, there is Tableau, right? You can use Tableau. Say, so, what is Tableau? So I hear about Tableau, learn about Tableau. Uh, you I encourage you guys to to learn about that or know more about the visualization tool. Then uh, we have issues. We have to pay licenses. So they say, well, there is another one from Microsoft, which is Power BI. So okay, we're gonna try it with Power BI, and Power BI was a little bit more difficult than Tableau. Uh, needed to learn a new codes and that kind of thing. So the, I, I learned Fortran maybe four, 34 years ago, and, and that, uh, that, that this new language was kind of weird. So anyway, finally, was able to get uh, Power BI working. And then in Power BI, um, you can also use some visualizations in Python. What is Python, by the way? So I'm curious about Python and start, oh, this is very interesting. So getting into Python as well, and then uh, connecting Power BI to databases. I don't know, database called SQL. What is SQL? Ah, SQL is another language. Interesting. So I started uh, learning about how to uh, get information from SQL and connected Power BI. And now all this dashboard, all these Excel that I was uh, refreshing manually every month, now it was completely automated. Uh, they uh, gathered Power BI gathered the information for the databases and that kind of things. I, I, I was really, really fortunate that I have a, a lot of friends in, in, in colleagues in, in DAO that helped me. Yeah, They were always open. Yeah, if you want to know about SQL, let's book some time. We can work on that. If you want to know more about Power BI, let's book some time. And this is something I love about this company, right? Ask. And you are going to find somebody that is going to help you in your journey, learn new skills. Is this is what you want? And find find your 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 destiny. It's, it's not don't, don't think that the, it, it, you, you are going to be committed to do the same thing all the time. If you are something that it wants to learn uh, from from new new things, this is a great place to do it. Thank you so much, both of you. Those were great messages. Um, and Fabio, you just kind of show what Erica was saying about being adaptable in changing that mindset when you have to learn all these new langu languages and move so many times. So now I'm gonna answer the question as well. Mine is gonna be faster, <laughs> quicker, because I mean, I don't have all the experience that you guys have had so far. And after that, we're gonna open the, uh, floor for some questions that you guys may have. So start thinking of those for any of the panelists or myself. So as I mentioned before, I'm from Colombia. I um, was born in a little town. And then after that, I moved to the capital state, like this, yeah, the capital of my state in that uh, little, uh, <laughs> which was called Cali. And then there I got my undergrad in chemistry, a bachelor in chemistry in 2015. At that time, I was already uh, very eager to learn English because I knew I wanted to get my PhD. And I knew that probably Colombia was not gonna be the best place if I wanted to learn all these techniques that I was reading about in the journals and the scientific papers. I mean, the Universidad of Valle has a great uh, chemistry program However, we didn't have all the resources to like make that impactful research. And that was something that was missing for me. And that's why I wanted to move out of the country to pursue my dream of getting a PhD. So before doing that, and because I was still learning English, I was doing a young researcher investigator that was after my undergrad. So that gave me like another year of research experience. And that, 
in that moment is when I was able to publish my first uh, scientific paper. And I was really happy. I was like, yes, this is exactly what I want. In that moment, in my mind, I was still wanted to do uh, keeping the academia. I still wanted to do a, or to be a faculty researcher at some mm -hmm. point and have like my own research group. So I moved to Clemson, South Carolina. I went there to, to get my PhD. So go Tigers, if there's anyone from Clemson here in this call. And it was a great experience. I mean, I got to learn all the new techniques that I wanted to learn. I got to uh, meet a lot of different people, different cultures, and that is wide opening for me. Um, and at the same time, when I was doing this, I kind of figured out that I didn't want to stay in academia, that I wanted to do something more. I mean, I was enjoying the fundamental research that I was doing, but at the same time, I wanted to do something that was going to be tangible, that I I could touch and that I knew that was going to impact someone else's life. Uh, so that's when I, I decided to kind of like look out for more options. And I think it was 2021 when uh, there was this exact same program, Passport to Dow, that was going live uh, through CHIP and I assisted, like I attended to that. They, at that time they had like three different series and they had different programs every time. They had like a panel like this one with like all type of employees. Then they had something about the different technologies and research that is done at Dow. And then I was starting to look like, okay, I think research and development in industry is a great opportunity and a great fit for me. In Colombia, for me, that looked kind of different for a chemist. It was more something that you will have to do like the same thing every day. Like you're gonna do titration every day. And it was like very monotonous. But here I found out that it was almost like doing research, but like that it's going to impact everyone else's life. So at that time, I also learned that there was something called the best symposium. And that is a wonderful program that you may want to apply and that I'm going to talk a little bit more later. Uh, there's also a sim uh, Diamond Symposium program that is for undergrads and the best DAO Symposium program is for PhD graduate students and postdocs. And during that time, that was the time when I learned more about DAO and the culture, the, the technologies and everything was really, really fascinating for me. And I was sold. I mean, <laughs> I was like, okay, that company looks amazing. I also participated in similar programs from other companies, but that was like just outstanding. And I think I'm still thinking in the same way after like one year and four months. I mean, it has not been a lot, uh, a long time, but I think, um, really happy where I am. I have my community. Uh, I have my HLM family, but also my best family. And that's how it, feel, it feels. And yeah, right now I'm doing, I'm a senior research specialist in the high pressure copolymers group. And the best thing, and as Fabio said, everyone there is willing to help you all the time. I mean, I was not a polymer chemist. I was doing something completely different. I was working with metal organic frameworks and now I'm working in polymer chemistry. So I had a lot to learn. And that was something that I learned during the uh, Passport to Dow and the Best Symposium. And is that usually you don't end up doing what you were doing either in grad school or in undergrad. And you have a lot of room to learn. So that's like, something amazing to, to take advantage of. All right, and with that, do you guys have any questions for any of us? Come on, don't be shy. Erica, there's one, there's one question in the chat. Does DAO offer sponsorships and or do offshore contracting? If so, do you have any tips? So you mean 
if Dow would hire and send you to a different country than other US, right? Erica, can yes. you explain? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Offshore contracting, we are more a chemical company than an oil company. Then uh, it's kind of a little bit different. I want to understand what you were saying when you say do offshore contracting, because maybe you have the concept that we are uh, related with oil companies that extract oil and do offshore contracting, right? Then uh, that is more a chemical company and we are not doing more offshore contracting, but we have a lot of contracting people, okay, in our company, depends on the services that we need, depends on the needs that we have. We hire a lot of contracts, okay, contractors, sorry. I got now I cannot answer for his sponsorships, but there is probably Monica Lidaris can talk about sponsorships. It depends, right? Yeah, so we have many opportunities at Dow from all levels. People that have even associate degree to bachelor degrees to um, PhD, master PhD, even high school degree, right? So there is a variety of programs that you can join. You can join as a DAO employee, or you can join as a contractor that let's example Kelly Services or some other um, company like that. We are a global company, so we have opportunities globally, but usually when we hire for a geography, we're hiring you for that geography. There is opportunities to relocate, like Fabio mentioned, and those are available. But if you're interested maybe in, in working in Colombia, you should be then um, applying there. And if you're interested um, working in the U.S., you should be applying in the U.S. But there is opportunities over time, right, to to change location. But I just want to also, I will put in the chat our Dow Career website that you can look there and browse the different opportunity, as well as you can set alerts for the type of jobs that you are interested in so you can get notifications and you know what is coming online. In terms of a sponsorship, I'm not sure if I understand in the question correctly, but if in terms of um, a sponsorship for um, students that are not US citizen, yes, thou do hire people that are not US citizen and they will sponsor the process for getting your, your either if it's your visa or your green card, and those are also options. Yep, and that's that's actually my case. I'm I'm in, I was an international student, and then now I'm going through that process. Okay, yep. I see Roxana has a question. Hi, my name is Roxana. I'm currently a chemistry PhD student. Um, so I had a question because I've heard about the the Dow Best Symposium, but I didn't have the chance to apply this past um, summer. So I'm currently in my last year of graduate school and I will be graduating um, summer 2024. Is is it not, is it better for me just to apply to Dell or still try to do the Dell Best Symposium if my timeline for graduating is um, in the summer? So it's, I think the Dell Symposium is usually July, June kind of timeline. Both. I will highly recommend you to apply for the DAO Symposium, but if you have any opportunity to apply through the website or on campus recruiting or any activity that your university or any of these professional associations will have, I will say apply to all of them, right? Like Erica mentioned, I mean, there's many people applying, right? So sometimes you have to play the number game. And in terms of the best symposium specifically, it will be perfect for a candidate like you. The application period is around, let's say March, April, when we'll be open. So if you are interested and you're selected, you can participate in the symposium and it's usually yeah, held in July. So it will be perfect timing. So I will strongly encourage you to don't miss the opportunity and apply. Okay, thank Roxana, you. Roxana, Roxana, mm -hmm. remind me, okay, Roxana, you have 50% of chance to win and 50% of chance to lose. Then don't think, just hit at the bottom and apply. 
Remember me forever, okay? <laughs> I thought okay. I applied thinking that I will not get the job, and I got the job. Then my woman, you know, then. exactly. Think always. Don't think. I will tell you. I tell you this as I tell my daughter. Don't think, okay? Just apply. You don't know if you are going or not. Then no, but... um, I, I will share a personal story, okay? My daughter was laid off on August, okay? The reduction of her company, she was laid off. Of course, as a young lady, she's crying. She thought that the world is coming down. She will not pay her bills, all these things. I told her something that my mom told me. Sometimes when God closes a door, he opens two windows. Okay? And we do not know this. Guess what? Two weeks later, she got two offers without her to apply in any place. Okay, because people knew her. And I told her, I said, you need to apply. If you get five offers, you have uh, offers to choose. Okay, of course, then I want you to apply for all DAO, okay? Look at www.com careers. Look if you have uh, something that interests you. It started to look. You can apply and DAO and probably Monica will laugh with me, but probably they will look at your resume and said, oh, you are graduating in July. Awesome. Can you come in August to work for me? That's what we can do. And don't give up. Yep. I completely agree, Erica. I think that's a great advice. Okay, I see Marco has also a question. Uh, thank you. And thank you, everybody on the panel. Um, my name is Marco, and I'm a chemical engineering uh, PhD student at Georgia Tech. And I wanted to build on uh, what Pavi was mentioning on all the new stuff that he has learned since he started in the company. So what do you, if you had to, if you could choose something to learn right now, a new language, a new software, a new technique, a new method, a new something, what would you learn or what would you embark yourself into, into learning now? Yeah, so first something that you like, right? But it, because if you don't uh, enjoy the coding, uh, you're going to hate it. I mean, it's, it's really, uh, I, I don't think that is, uh, is any, anything in between. You like it or you're not, right? Uh, it's, it's like that. So um, the way I uh, start um, really having fun with that is because I found practical applications and it helped me to um accelerate or do better my job right so <clears throat> i encourage you if you have a, um a, what is your major a, a mechanical, a mechanical engineering or chemical 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 engineering so chemical engineering there are many possibilities to combine machine learning and i have uh, maybe mohit in the in the team mohit was actually one of our data science interns we are very interested in chemical engineering, chemistries that also know about uh, machine learning, Python skills, all, all kinds of digital skills. That combination of the skills are, are becoming very powerful, right? It doesn't mean that we are not going to value the single domain, people that are very, very good at, uh, at, at pure chemistry or um, uh, some kind of uh, material science domain and that kind of thing but <clears throat> the addition again the combination of your domain whatever your domain with data science is going to be a powerful differentiation tool and there are ways to do it uh, not very expensive myself i got my uh, certification from coursera from dow google's analytics right it takes time dedication but you can do it and it's not going to um break the, the bank. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that is really affordable. And, and, <clears throat> and Georgia Tech has a great, great program in terms of uh, data science, as you as you probably know. Yeah, Marco was one of our interns too for the Adisa pro program. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's you. great. Congratulations, Marco. Okay, great, Mar Kimberly, we have one more question. Yeah, before we do the raffle. Oh, you're, oh, you're mute. Mute Hello, thank you for that. My name is Kimberly Oltenwalder. I recently graduated with a bachelor's in interdisciplinary engineering with a focus in energy and systems. Wow. Um, my focus, 
my question is um is more for Erica or whoever could answer this because I know you mentioned that you work within manufacturing and my goal is to work in the manufacturing space I just want to know how was your experience and if you could speak upon that Oh my God, in manufacturing, I love it. <laughs> um, that's the reason that I moved at Kimberly several ways, okay? But I continue to work with manufacturing, okay? I have passion for uh, plants, right? How we produce product, reactors. I discussed today about candle filters, okay? I'm a leader, but I continue to have passion for the engineering. If you really want to work in manufacturing, okay? Look for jobs that we can start there. Improve engineer, run plant engineer, okay? Everything that you see associated with that, okay? Um, all the types of jobs that work with operations, we call, sometimes not, people do not call manufacturing, but call operations, okay? Look for that type of jobs. It start there. And don't be surprised, okay? If after you get a job in manufacturing, you started to be curious to go to, oh, I wanted to move to safety. Oh, I want to move to waste water, okay? Uh, the water treatment. Oh, I want to move to site logistics, okay? Where the people move broader. Then don't be surprised if in your career, you start a job and you say, I thought that I like manufacturing, but you started to learn as Monica said, okay? You start to learn. And you go in another way, and it's okay because it's okay. you acquire knowledge. Okay, yep. I have been ten different business. Okay, from plastics to liquids to solids. Then I can tell you, just acquire knowledge and define what drives your passion. Okay, learn to know. I will tell you something really important. It's important for each of you to know yourself. What mm. makes you happy? And Monica said this really well. How drives your passion? What you really like to work? Because if you find something that you like it, it will be easy to move on to another one. Her example is really nice. She was so passionate for something. And when she came to doubt, they moved her to the opposite side. And she loved it in the same way. Then be flexible to understand that in the beginning of your career, you are in a learning process. Okay, I want to learn in the beginning of the career. Sorry, I spoke too Thank fast. Thank you so Monica. much, Erica. No, that's Thank okay. You. Uh, Cassandra, do we have time for one more question? Um, if it's super fast, one minute. Okay, yeah, Alicia, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm a mechanical engineer graduating in May. I'm also interested in manufacturing. So I had a follow-up for Erica asking, since you mentioned when you first started, you were um, you know, the first woman in your plant and I had an internship where I was also in a plant environment with not many women. So I kind of wanted to just know, what do you think has been maybe like your biggest challenge that you've encountered within manufacturing? Since I know you <laughs> hopped around a lot. Oh my goodness, okay. I will tell you, <laughs> exactly, thank you, you can do it. Thank you, Fabio, I love this man. Alicia, believe in, I will give you three tips. Believe in yourself, okay? Be resilient, you can do it, and smile, okay? And why I will tell you smile? Because uh, nobody, will challenge you if you believe in yourself and you believe that you can do it, okay? You can smile and say, oh, sorry, I don't know, can you teach me? Oh, you are right, can I learn with you? Oh, I hope that I can have your job one day. Remember what I told that guy? Smile, and people will listen to you, okay? I have more hurdles and more roadblocks in my career that you cannot imagine. And I'm here today. I have a global role. I have uh, a lot of people that I can help as you guys, okay? And I believe in myself. I do not give up in the first roadblock. And I have uh, too many, okay? <laughs> that I can tell you in another section. Then my only tips for you is believe in yourself. You can do it and smile. Thank you Thank so you. much, Erika. 
All right, Cassandra, let's go to the rubble. Okay, so we have four sessions here. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's see. Okay, I'm trying to see all of you and the thing here. Okay, so um, we have the first session. It's going to be for Erika. We'll go ahead and spin. Wait, can you all see my raffle thing? Yes, we okay. can. Okay, so the first session is That's well for the drums. <laughs> you need to have music. Look, you won. Oh, look Eric. at that. Eric. Erica and perfect. Eric. Yes, perfect matching. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to go ahead and remove him. The second one is for Monica. All right. Oh. Let's see who's the lucky one. <laughs> yeah, Roxana. Yay, Roxana. Yeah. Okay. Can give you a lot of tips for the best symposium. <laughs> oh, yes, match. Yes. Okay, and then we have Fabio. <clears throat> Alicia Cervantes, amazing. Good. We actually have one more session. Uh, Paula couldn't join us here, but we'll make sure that you that we connect you with her. So we have one more session. And Gaspar Torres. Okay. Congratulations, uh, all. Awesome. We will make sure to connect all of you here soon, this week or next week. Um, I was wondering the same, but, uh, Erika. <laughs> What's up, Andrea Aguirre? I thought that's your daughter. <laughs> yeah. Not sure whether she is uh, she is my daughter, uh, but she is Andrea Camila. So normally is uh, she use both uh, names. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So I have my email here in the chat. If anyone has any issues with their mentor mentee, um, let me go ahead and stop recording here. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that joined here. Our panelists, the team at Dow. Um, the students, the early career professionals that joined us, um, and just remind you that all of you are more than deserving to work at companies than Dow. You are more than deserving to take up spaces in engineering fields, um, and SHIP is here to support you. Dow is here to support you, um, and I'm excited to see what your future has in store for all of you. Thank yes, you and much. please check those links that Lidari's share on the chat. Those are very important and will give you a lot of information for all opportunities that Dow has. Amazing. Thank you all so much. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, team. Take care.